Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Monday, July the 25th. And I just want to talk about um, FFT averaging. Uh, in the previous video, um, I was able to finally receive the hydrogen line. I tried for two months. It took two months of planning and uh, various trial and error. I tried every azimuth and every elevation at my home location. And I finally discovered that the background uh, interference was just too high. So I moved to a location uh, far north of, of the city, about uh, I think it was about 50 to 60 kilometers, and I was able to uh, receive the hydrogen line there. But one of the things I, I noticed, I was using, I tried various software configurations, uh, various programs, and I found that the um, there was an excellent article in RTL uh, SDR.com using um, SDR Sharp with the uh, IF averaging plugin. That worked for me the best. I tried other programs. I liked uh, Raspberry Pi with GQRX. It has an FFT averaging as well, although I only brought out my Windows laptop with me. So one of the things that I, th I thought was really neat was uh, the uh, FFT averaging. Now, I'm a telecom guy. I'm not a, an astronomer, but for a telecom signal, the telecom, let's say you have a carrier, it changes quite a bit with modulation. However, if you're looking at the uh, hydrogen line, the hydrogen line is basically a constant sinusoid over a small period of time. So if you do an averaging with the FFT, you can clean up the signal because the noise, you know, it might be plus one volt, one, one microsecond, and a microsecond later minus one volt. So over, over a period of time, uh, it cancels it, it itself out, whereas the sine wave is constant. So I thought, just to simulate that, I'd, I'd build a little model in GNU radios. So here's my here's my GNU radio model. I've got a signal source at 1, 14, 20 hertz. Let's say hertz represents megahertz, and there's a Gaussian noise source. And then I'm going into uh, a GUI sync, which is a, a scope and a spectrum analyzer. So let's just run this and see what happens. So right now we're, we're not taking every, any averaging. So there's my uh, hydrogen line at 1420 megahertz. Now watch what happens when I uh, average. Let's say I average at 10. Notice this is cleaned up quite a bit. So the signal sticks out more because the noise is canceled when you average it. And if I go to 100, for instance, it's cleaned up even more. So that's the idea of the FFT averaging is that the noise will cancel each other out because it's dissimilar, it's random, whereas the signal is, reinforces itself when you average it because it's not changing. So that's, um, that's that. Now the other thing I found very interesting is the ability in the IF averaging plugin to do background cancellation. So I simulated that as well. So here's my GNU radio model for the background cancellation. So I've got my signal source here, uh, I've got my noise source, and there's, let's say, a spurious. Now the spurious I found uh, all over the place was 1420.8. That's pretty close to this. So I just picked a, another frequency, let's say 2000 megahertz. Um, so it sticks out, it's far away from a modeling point of view. Now to generate the background, what I did was a lot of people just um, take the LNA and BPF and terminate it and calculate the background. I, find, I found a better way was to take the dish, include the dish plus the RTL plus the LNA BPF and do a background but aim the dish away from the signal. So aim it to an area where you know there was no signal. So I, I simulate that here by putting the amplitude here as zero. So I'm just going to get the noise in any spurious. Okay, so then I add them all together and I save it in a file sync. Okay, uh, I've saved it just on my desktop. Now, to show the action of the background here, then we, we have our signal, we aim the dish at the actual signal, so the signal is back here, and then I'm taking the file I just saved and subtracting it. So when I, um, when I play this, what you'll see is, is a very, very clean signal, uh, and eventually the, I save the file for about five to 10 seconds, so after the file cancels out, you'll see that the background comes back just to show you the difference. So you see a very, very clean signal here. There's my, my signal at 1420 uh, megahertz. And after uh, a certain period of time, the file that I saved um, is terminated and you'll see everything 
So that simulates with, with no background. So there we go. So that's what would happen if you had no background a subtraction. You get the signal, 1420 megahertz, and you get your spurious and you get your noise. So uh, here's a picture of uh, when I was on site north of Toronto. There's calculating the background. Notice I've got really uh, two large spurious tones there and a bit of um, a bit of carrier punch through there. And then you can see the um, the characteristic of the dish with the LNA and the BPF. It's not flat, so that's another nice thing. So very, uh, you can get the char bandpass characteristic as well. And then that's where the background subtracted. So that's really, really nice. And that's, that's how it made it so easy to pick up the hydrogen line. So that's pointing away from the, from the Milky Way. And then later on, I pointed it at the Milky Way, but the background is all cleaned up.